Uh, nowadays, this kind of scene would be... I mean, it's, it would still be controversial in some circles, but not because it's an unheard of scene. More because there are other reasons why it would be controversial. But the scene itself would be considered kind of passe by today's standards. You'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean when we get there. Okay. No idea where these monsters are, but... Oh, it's a charging guy. Whoa, couldn't see where he was charging from. Knock him down. We didn't get the shot, but we did take the bat down. Beautiful. Where's he at? Why can't I hit this guy? Oh, he's around a corner. Oh, is there another one of those? He must have come from way across the other side of the map. Get down. Wow, how did I miss him? How did I miss him with a sword standing right next to him? Only Aya could manage to do that. Alright, let's go upstairs, go back to the room. That's the wrong way again. I keep getting turned on on this little map here. Because the NPC, after completing the fetch quest, said, Thanks for completing the fetch quest. I'll be done doing the thing you wanted me to do in the first place as soon as you go back to the inn and rest. So that's what we're doing. Back to the inn and rest. A little tired. It's nap time. And now it's cutscene time. Which means it's put Pepsi in my face time. Today I have... Uh, vanilla Pepsi, which they started making again. And what? Why are we... Okay. We're in the future now, and I is a midget. Oh, it's an X-Men situation. I see. This is the underground Professor X facility. In the future, none of the X-Men wear pants. Their gun blades are much cooler than mine. I want one of theirs. Let's just chop one of their arms off and take it. No, they could probably evaporate like... Like number nines did. Dang it. That bums me out. <gasps> oh, okay. It was all a bad dream. How come... In movies or whatever, whenever a protagonist is like sleeping fitfully and they wake up... To the sounds of TV, it's always like... Either old cartoons or horror movies like old black and white horror movies and it sounds like Aya was watching both at once that mixture of screams and sound effects and things does not correlate to any particular show I can think of so here's Parasite Eve 2's shower scene and I'm sure this is going to get me flagged on YouTube for having uh, what amounts to softcore pornography on my channel but yeah a lot of people were uh very critical about the inclusion of a shower scene in the game because it's just very gratuitous it has absolutely no bearing on the plot and I don't know why it was included in the game I'm glad it was included in the game I never turned down a good shower scene in, in a game or a movie I'm you know what if you're gonna write a list put me in the column pro shower scene I'm on it it has to do with like vulnerability. It has to do with showing the hair, the hero or heroine at their most vulnerable at a time in the plot where a gargantuan monster with a bazooka in his face emerges out of the distant mist. Like I'm sure that's the explanation, but yeah, there's this guy. Oh my goodness. Can I just say that I love this monster design? Can I just say that I friggin' love this dude? I don't like fighting him. In a normal game, fighting him is incredibly frustrating. I'm not gonna have any problem. I'm gonna gunblade him in the face probably twice and that'll be it. But look just the design of him. Just imagine how uncomfortable it would be having a flamethrower routed through the back of your head and out your mouth. How does he swallow anything? 
Also, considering the shower scene we just watched, I think that Aya should fight this boss while wearing a towel. Just saying. When you're making your list, put me on the pro towel side as well. So we're going to wreck this fool. And in fact, you have to, because the good ending of the game is contingent on beating this guy in, in a, a certain amount of time. I think like three minutes or something. That should do it, actually. Nope, not quite. There we go. Twice. I said it was going to take two swings, and that, in fact, did. Um, we killed him, and he's going to like break a bunch of walls and do stupid stuff if you don't deplete his hit points within a certain amount of time I think it's three minutes it might be a little more a little less I'm not sure um, and the battle can take that long so you've got to strafe like up and down I'm sorry not strafe I can't strafe you can only walk forward but you've got to run like up and down this very narrow little pathway um, on the hotel balcony um, while taking pot shots where you can dodging his flamethrower attack and his giant slam attack Uh, we're going to take all of those, and we're going to use that protein capsule here, because that is a permanent HP increase. We cannot go down this way anymore, so we got to go back through the room, out the back window, down the ladder, across the water tower, through the saloon, nothing but net. Um, if you don't kill that boss in the time limit, whatever the time limit is, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember, I forgot to look it up. Um, the boss kind of stomps off in the distance, and in doing so, he kills Flint. That's right, they killed the dog. How horrible. I thought I had him. I really thought I had him. There we go. Whoa, there's a bunch of them. And I had just decided to... Like, she made the decision to miss there. That was, that shot was hers to miss, and she made the, uh... Actual decision to not hit anybody. Word up. I just killed something like 50 times your size, guys. I'm sorry, but that fight was not going to do it for me. Uh, yeah, we'll go out through the saloon. I think there's another battle in the saloon now. Of course there is. Of course there is. So we can get all the way down to make sure that uh, Douglas and Flint are okay. Can I get the whole group of them? I do have a shotgun. No. We're not gonna... There we go. Oh, that wasn't a flying guy. That was one of the explodey popper guys. Fair enough. So, there is a good ending and a bad ending in this game, and the ending you get is contingent on a couple of things. I'm going to try to make sure that I get everything. Um, I do have my itinerary in front of me here. I do have my list for my test play of all the stuff that I've got to do to make sure that the, e the ending happens the way it's supposed to. Oh. It looks like she like kneed him backwards, like put her knee out, and he went flying back into prime gunblading range. Which, you know, excellent battle tactics. My hat's off to you, Aya. But the first thing you have to do to make sure you get a good ending in this game is make sure that Flint survives this that boss battle. Which, if you don't have a lot of BP, if you don't have good ammo reserves, can be very difficult indeed. Time to take down this guy. Nice! Oh, scorpions. Um. One more. Nope. Where's he at? Oh, he's way back there in the hallway. I should be able to hit him from here. Shouldn't I? Oh, he's way back there. There we go. Wait, I hit the wrong one. There was two of them there. That's not even the one that I wanted to hit. So if you don't kill the boss in the allotted time, you fight your way down here, and unfortunately, Flint the dog is deceased, and Douglas is all 
like bummed out about it, and then you go back to Douglas's trailer and you find an item called the chicken armor. And I don't remember what the chicken armor does, but I think it is a suitable uh, reward for killing the dog NPC. But because we actually saved Flint, we don't have to worry about getting the chicken armor. Oh, I forgot that Douglas placed landmines out there in the desert to protect the town. Well, the truck is fixed. The hotel is destroyed. The hotel is done. Hotel is total dunskies. Beautiful. Do I get a reward for saving your dog? Thanks for your help. Come on, my trailer later. Oh, yeah. Douglas liked the shower scene, too. Got him thinking, that's my, I have a dirty mind. I'm not talking about that anymore. So, some things have changed. Uh, now, the path that leads from Main Street to the driveway where I go back around to the factory, that path is now destroyed. I can't use it anymore, which means if I want to go back around to the trailer to get Douglas's reward, I've got to go back around through the saloon where I just came through. Luckily, that area will stay clear until I get back there. Uh, also, I need to go talk to Douglas anyway, even if I didn't want the reward, because I would like to stock up on... Oh, I can't go that way. I got it through the saloon. What am I thinking? Um, I'm sure I've still got a ton of ammo. I'm sure I'm still really good on the ammo front, but why not keep it maxed? So I don't have to fall back on my uh, rifle slash grenade launcher. Why use that contingency if I don't have to? I would prefer to use the gun blade for as much of the game as possible. Just because you guys don't have any idea how satisfying it is. But it really is. Really super satisfying. Love it. Um, which means I have to make sure to say no to Kyle, because if I when I gotta go through the garage, Kyle's gonna stop me and be like, "Hey, let's go out to the shelter now, are ya?" And I gotta make sure to say no to him, so I get the opportunity to go talk to Douglas. Otherwise, we'll leave for the next scene, and that was pretty nice. Can I get a plasma off before these guys bite me? Nope. Can I get a plasma off, please? There we go. Which is kind of a balls move, because uh, if you look at the map where the telephones are, you've got one in the hotel lobby, um, one back in the trailer. But you have to go, and then your only uh, ammo refill is still out in Aya's car. So if you've like really low on ammo at this point and you don't have BPs to buy a lot more you've got to run back to Aya's car to restock it's a really kind of crappy situation because you've got to go through a lot of rooms to restock the ammo then backtrack through a lot of rooms which are all infested with monsters by this point and uh I gotta go through the garage what am I doing oh this is the way to the garage herp derp um yeah to restock Aya's ammo then go back backtrack through a bunch of other rooms that are still infested with monsters and get to a save point and only then can you backtrack and talk to Kyle. Because the opening of the next scene in the game where we pick up the next session of this Let's Play probably is say no. Say no to him. When he asks a question, say no. Um, the first scene is a very difficult encounter which has very high risk of death. Very tough monsters, especially if you're low on resources. So we really want to make sure you get those resources. And if you don't, if you don't, take adequate time to prepare and you run into a game over there you've got to replay a lot of the scenes in uh, dry field back here so he's giving us a lecture about DNA most of which I'm sure is biologically incorrect I'm sure most of this is just hogwash but I am not a scientist I am not a biologist I am not a virologist. I am not a DNAologist. A DNAologist, I just decided, is a scientist that studies DNA. I just determined that all by myself. Nobody helps. A 
Apparently Kyle Madigan is a biologist. And you would think that Aya would be an expert on this material by now. Like, even if she wasn't before, just the events of Parasite Eve 1, you think she would have, like, become an expert on it. Virus triggered evolution. Nope, sorry, that's dumb. <laughs> uh, I railed about that in Parasite Eve 1 quite a lot, didn't I? That the game frequently uses evolution when it means mutation. And then a bunch of people pointed out in my comments that it's not, even mutation is not the correct word, Brook Road. And I know, but what do you, what do you, there is no real-life equivalent of an animal that just spontaneously turns into a monster. You can't, you can't science that up by just attaching words to it that sounds good. It is pure science fiction. It's D&D &D stuff. It doesn't happen in the real life. Trying to make it sound like science. I get why writers have to do it. I get why they have to make it sound plausible to sell the story, but I it always I always see through it. It always takes me out of the story anytime they over, they try to explain those things. I would have preferred the science characters in the Parasite Eve games just be like, we don't know why animals are turning into monsters, but it's freaking scary. And that would have been enough for me. I wouldn't have been taken out of the story so much. But because they keep saying, like, oh, DNA, mitochondria, evolution. Yes, these are, these are, I read those in a biology textbook. These are words that smart people use. This is a story for smart people. Uh, I, I see right through it. I just, it, it bounces off me. Oh, I don't have to say no to Kyle. Okay, cool. Neato, so... He doesn't suck me directly into the next scene. Get this, get the big guy. Oh, come on, Aya, please target the big guy. Come on. Oh, she hadn't wasted all that time targeting the wrong monsters. That's a bummer. Alright, fine. Fine. I'm just gonna shotgun you fools then. Stop targeting the flying monster! Oh my god! Aya, uh, for, for, for the love of Benji Adams. Why are you... She keeps wanting to kill that flying monster. She's like, clearly, that is the biggest threat. Please shoot him! Please with your bullets! Please, what are you what are you aiming at? What else is up there that you're aiming at? There's just this flying horrible creature. Put bullets in it, please. That was harrowing. That was harrowing. I played really badly right there. Oh my goodness. I there's this you have you can't pick the target you want to use. You have to keep pushing the square button, and square cycles through all the targets on the field. But for some reason right there it just cycled between the two flying monsters and wouldn't target either of the big guys. Oh well, it's no problem. Let's go see what uh Let's go see what Douglas has for us up here. Sup. I killed all the monsters that were outside, by the way, so don't worry about those. Oh, come on, Aya. Aya just doesn't have Solid Snake's uh, appreciation for good gun porn. You know what I mean? Large hand. Inventory full. Um, I can throw something out. Here, let's just pop this. There we go. Obtained large handgun. What do we got here? It is the M950, so it holds a lot of rounds, fires the 9mm rounds, so it's kind of a good upgrade from the standard gun, which you might still be using at this point, the regular blue gun that Aya starts the game with. So yeah, good gun upgrade. We won't be using it because we've got our gun blade, and yeah, we are running out of slugs, so let's go ahead and buy some. Yo, you want some bips? Uh, yeah, our slugs. Purchase as many as I can carry, please. 
Beautiful. All right. Thank you much. We out. This is the wrong way. Your door's over here. Sorry. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and finish this up here. Let's go ahead and take strength and healing to heal a lot of HP. I've been using quite a lot of plasma. Let's see if I can get plasma all the way up. Nice. And I guess I don't care about the rest of it. Let's get that up to level 3. Once you get both to level 3, it opens up the third ability in each element. Drain HP from adjacent targets. Sure, let's just strengthen that a little bit. I'm out of eight, I'm out, of, out of EXP. So our magic powers are a little better. And that's another thing that kind of bugs me out of this game. Let's use all the the, the silly scientific uh, tech, uh, terminology for one half of the game and then just magic powers for the other half. Aya, did you know that your mitochondrial DNA can bolster your Earth magic powers? Yes, thank you. I knew that. I watched that on Captain Planet. Time to save. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Shoutouts to JP Friction, who sponsored this video, and to everyone who makes this channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.